thank you for coming. Uh, obviously, this is the first installment of our three-part webinar series based around summer trading. Today's topic is trading uh, in the midst of ranges, which is something we've seen a lot of. Uh, I have Anang Sangvi, uh, Sangluchi, more formally known as, and uh, let's get right to it. So, All right. Lucci, obviously your most uh, infamous summer trade came last year by way of uh, Amazon. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. To be honest, like I don't even remember that man. Trades now just just uh, just pass real quickly. So uh, last year, what was she do? What was she even doing? What was she even doing? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was the break of three hundred. Oh, I see. I and see. They kept, they kept toying with you. I uh, see. Two eighty, two ninety, all the way up, and then. Obviously, uh, they'd bring it right back to the middle of the range, and that's yeah. something that that we've really seen a lot of, especially this summer. I mean, this is yeah. one of the few summers that that I've really uh, been able to notice how range bound particular names have been. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, for for those of you out there, I mean, who are trading on your own, I mean, if you take a look at the past couple of months here, uh, you know, just going into the summer, we we've been, you know, yes, we've been bullish and everything, but uh, you know, it hasn't been, it hasn't made for a lot of clean, clean trading and breakouts and things like that. So you've had to do a lot of buying dips, a lot of fading, a lot of things that most retail, let's face it, they're they wouldn't do. Right, exactly. And then I think the biggest thing for me, I mean, obviously I've had to take a step back and, and worry more about things going on with the site and the company, but for you, what what does the tape look like? I mean, I know last yeah. summer, last summer was a, a big summer for me uh, before August, obviously, uh, yeah. when everything happened to me, but I, I remember pretty vividly how difficult it was to yeah. kind of gauge some of the uh, the momentum trades. Yeah, and again, I mean, you talk to different people, they're going to tell you different things, but overall, uh, you know, and it, we've had a, a, a definite bullish sentiment underlying uh, most of the large cap names that, that we trade very regularly, but on the long side now, it's not as easy to, to snake away these sort of day trades. You have to go to longer time frames, you have to trade options a lot differently than you would in a volatile environment where you would get, let's say, follow through the next day and the next day and the next day, or even the next hour or even you know the next 30 minutes. So now what you'll see is massive shakeouts happening where options prices just destroy you, uh, and then you'll see that big dip buy come in after they've, they've, they've washed everybody out. That's, that's really what you're seeing right now. And, and that's something that we saw on the market overall with the SPY, what was it, last week? Last week, yep. When we had that bullshit news on that Portuguese bank, you remember yeah. that? You remember that? Yeah. Where we got down 20 handles. Uh, you know, we we had some garbage news before that. Uh, you know, that would sort of promote this sort of weak sentiment, and then everything would just retrace after that. So again, um, in a situation where your timing has to be impeccable if you're going to be doing the intraday trades. Um, and you might be right on your trade idea as far as, okay, Visa's going higher, LinkedIn's going higher, this thing is going higher. You might be completely right, but you, like most people, aren't ending up with any money in their pocket for the trade idea. Right. So now, with, with that in mind, obviously the whole longer time frame uh, positions type thing, right. how do you kind of manage that while, I mean, we're in the midst of earnings season right now. Right. So if you a month ago, Knowing that obviously summers are slower and it's really range bound, were to take right. out a, a long term position on, I don't know, we'll say a Baidu. The ADRs look good lately. Uh, sure. If you can pull a Baidu for me. Sure. Um, so if you were to take out a long term position on that, something that expires in, in August, September, right. how do you manage that knowing that, I mean, they have earnings in, right. in the middle of that position? Right. And by the way, if anybody was watching right now, you take a look at earnings right now, this Baidu is up another 15 points, you know, and that's on top of this recent oh. rally here for for God knows how long. So you're that's talking huge. about singling out names that are moving sort of without the, the, influence, the influence from the index. So there are certain names that you're going to be able to go to and get clean moves on regardless of uh, you know, the summer environment, regardless of that situation. And that's one of the key points to summer trading in general to really find and single out those names. So as far as holding though a swing through this earnings call, you know, chances are you know, you're not, you're not going to do that. But there's still plenty of moves here prior to that call uh, you know that you can capitalize. Like this move to 200 bucks was pretty was 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 pretty was pretty doable. 
It was pretty doable okay. as long as you were coming in on the dips, as long as you were not buying options where they usually get you to buy them. Uh, and that's the key to summer trading here is sort of that curb your enthusiasm trade and not leap in when everybody else is, 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 is climbing into the option. So then would, would you say that summer trading, uh, you're allowed to take more of a, a dip buyer's approach? I mean, when everyone's, when everyone's jumping out, that's when you should step in and, and start looking for longer term. Positions. Absolutely, absolutely. Now the problem is, as well, you you and I both know, is that when everyone doesn't want these options, and and when these prices are cheap, when you ask yourself, like realistically, am I going to buy? Do I want to buy here? The answer is always no, because it doesn't look that great at those points. And 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 retail traders always are going to wait until it tests, right? Until it tests those levels. But it's going to test you until you know you're racking up considerable amount of losses because you're going for that breakout. So it's a complete shift on your entry points versus you know piling away at a at a, at a breakout trade that usually would work in a more volatile follow through environment. I think, uh, if, if you don't mind, can you pull up LinkedIn for me? Sure, sure. This, I was, think, this was the I biggest one. The this LinkedIn was the biggest one that just really, happened. Really I mean, this was so that. clean. This was so clean. And again, we, 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 we shouted out there on Twitter and, and to all the chat room folks. That one day where finally she popped up to about 162, I mean, that was the start of it. And, all, and Facebook had already gone. The market was yeah. looking good. Uh, and then the next day, she kind of messed around at 164. And then yesterday, it just opened the, it opened the floodgates. It, it completely opened the floodgates, and this was a laggard. This was a laggard. Nobody was really looking at it because most of the other high flyers had already retraced back to their highs. Uh, you know, from from that port, from that day where that Portuguese bank failed. Um, you know, and now you're looking at this thing 20 points. You know, you're looking at a four-day 20-point move on LinkedIn. Any option you're going for, and obviously the weeklies. But even if you're not in the weeklies, next week, two weeks out, a month out, you're talking about massive money on this LinkedIn swing. Exactly. And I, I think that's the other part that, that's kind of really important is managing those expectations. You're not going to, we're not going to see those 100% days that we, right. we saw all September and October last year. Right. I mean, jumping in right. and jumping out is a huge thing. Right. That, and again, like you can still see that kind of, of money provided you're buying those options at the right place and that is the problem that is the that is the main issue here with summer trading because you're taking traders who who usually go for these breakouts myself included and they usually buy uh, at certain times and that that entry point has completely shifted during uh, you know the hours of, of summer trading and if you're not uh, you know if you're not anticipating that you're gonna end up keep you're gonna end up uh, you know buying at places that just aren't gonna work they, they're not gonna work for you right so I was looking at Twitter earlier and I meant I noticed uh, you mentioned Priceline today yeah yep now Priceline was something that that I've watched recently that really right. hasn't moved too much from that 1200 mark a, this is a perfect example of summer trading. This really is a perfect example of summer trading. So if you look at what's been going on for the past month or so, right? You and even this past 10 days, what's the level that you can't get over, right? It's like high 1230s and right. 1240. And this morning, right on the backs of earn, of a crappy earnings call from uh, TripAdvisor, she gaps down but spikes up to maybe 1242 off the open, dumps everybody out, and then makes a final like breakout push, right? Now, who's where's where where are people buying? Chances are retail is buying after this has happened. Right. And then what's happening on their options buy? They get smoked. They get smoked. So you always have to wait. You always have to wait. It's like, yes, okay, this trade might happen. But now we gotta we gotta wait. We gotta curb our enthusiasm here and wait for that wait for that better option price. Right. And I think Priceline is one of those uh, companies that come earnings. It's really scary to yes. to try and play with. I mean, especially when you take into account what the airlines are doing. I mean, right. I know American Airlines, who obviously I'm not too fond of right now. <laughs> uh, they they just posted a blowout quarter. What is their uh, ticker? A A L. A A L. Okay. They posted a blowout quarter, but the stock yeah. uh, they the did stock fantastic. Sold yeah, mm, interesting. Okay, but uh, and they actually they upped their dividend too. The first time since 1980. Interesting. If I'm not mistaken. 
Interesting. Maybe time to cash out on that stock. Maybe that's what everybody else is thinking too. I hope so. But yeah. uh, I mean, just just going forward, where do you see the the money going for the summer? I mean, obviously we're looking for more broad trends and and things of that nature. But right, what are you right. what are you looking for now that you're back in the saddle? Now that I'm back in the saddle, to be honest, I mean, it's just more continuation of the bullish activity. So continuation of what we're seeing right now, going after dips in, in names that have been aggressively bought. Uh, I think there's still plenty of space in the financial sector. This, so these would be the Bank of America's, the Morgan Stanley's, the Goldman Sachs. Uh, you know, all these things have been performing very well, and you can clearly see money being being pushed towards this particular sector. Um, you know, and then you got the MasterCard and the Visa. Although the Visa just reported earnings and the stock is down considerably overnight, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure now about this one, but uh, you know, so so continuing to watch that rotation, uh, and then and then and then adjusting your entry points, you know, to to account for the dip by sort of territory and the shakeout factor. You know where where they push these things to levels that people want to buy, people want to pay up for these options, and that's where they get you. That's where these market makers are laughing all the way to the bank because they get you to pay up on your options, and these options are going to end up going to nothing, absolutely nothing, by the time your expiration rolls around. No, that's that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um, with regard to some of the bigger. Uh, Firms and, and companies that kind of pull the strings behind the scenes. I see a question here from Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, who we both know pretty well yeah. on Twitter. Uh, he's wondering if the panoramic of the summer trading uh, could change. Oh, absolutely, so absolutely, and that's and that's the nature of the markets. That's the beautiful thing about it, and hence why we talk tape. Uh, you know, at, at, at St. Lucie, this is what we talk about, simply because like watching money flow through the tape, through price action, it can help you anticipate, you know, where these environments are going to change. Um, you know, so absolutely, I think, I think uh, uh, after the summer's over and we get into September or October, you know, absolutely things will, things will change. Um, you know how this how this is going to happen. It could be influenced by some macro factors. Maybe they start jacking interest rates up early, and the market actually does sell off. But frankly, I can't see that happening. So I still see this this float happening uh, as we close out the year. So you know, finding the right sectors, finding where that money is going, is going to be key to making sure you know you're you're trading the right names. You're 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 staying you're staying and sticking with the right names. Right. So Stephen Longoria uh, just asked if we're seeing the best moves before 11 a.m. or Absolutely. Are we seeing Absolutely. some continuation throughout Absolutely. the day? Absolutely. You're seeing all the juice happen right off the open, and then you're just seeing nothing happen after that. You're just seeing you're just seeing stalled action happen after that, as far as the actual indexes go. So, you know, and that's where you got to continue focusing on your individual names. So, for example, you, you know, you take the market today. You take the market today. The market, uh, what, we gapped, we gapped higher. We sold off uh, in the morning as usual, as we usually do. And then we kind of came back. So you have like a, a window here of a shakeout and a dip buy, and then you get nothing here for the rest of the day. And you single out, you know, certain names to go after. So if you were trading the LinkedIn, just realizing she's still bullish, she doesn't care what the market is doing, uh, you know, and sticking with names like that um, versus names that are already overbought, and you you know you can't really mess around with them anymore. So then, do you think that we're back in that? Uh to market structure where you get like the first half of the market to, is a tradable opportunity and then obviously lunch and then after 1.30 you get that second half that there might be a push but if yeah. not you just chalk it up as a loss and move on until the next day? Absolutely. As far as intraday trading goes, as far as intraday trading goes, you know, yeah, you're getting that juice off the morning and then you're, you're your chances are you're getting nothing here as you coast out for the for the end of the day, and that's as that's in reference to if you want to make a new trade, you know, during the day. If you miss that morning juice and if you miss those buys, you know, that you could have gotten in the morning, you know, chasing it into the afternoon is going to lead you into a lot of problems. Which again, that is the plight of the retail intraday trader uh, during the summertime. Right. Absolutely. So I mean. I, as as far as I'm concerned, summer trading is pretty much about uh, buying those dips, yep. waiting waiting for those longer term tr trades to pay out after earnings. Right. I mean, right. obviously after you earnings, get that, yeah, yeah, you get that big a, consolidation uh, right. that usually comes. I mean, Netflix a couple years ago or two years ago was a, a prime example of that. 
it, it ripped off earnings, came back uh, about half of what it had made off the earnings report, right. and then that was the time to, to get back in. So. Right, and, and with the earnings season, that creates more of the chop, you know? So everything is definitely still bullish, but, you know, after an earnings call comes out, that produces a lot of the chop, you know? You're taking a look at this Amazon, which is down what? 10, 15 points off the open. You're looking at Baidu, which is up 20 points. You have you have stocks that are up. You have stocks that are down. The market doesn't know what to do. The market has, you know, it's it's just gonna it's just gonna chop around here during the summer. And you really have to select your names correctly, and your entries have to be a little bit different than they were, you know, when you get that clean follow through and clean moves on the indexes every single day. Now I, I've been wondering for a while. Do you think that the tape allows you to kind of uh, know what's coming as far as the earnings report. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead these days and say no. Um, you know, uh, let's say the let's say the Facebook for example. Like previously, you know, you would see let's say a big run up on a stock before the earnings was reported, right? So if you look at the if you look at a ten day here. Uh, you can see that they bought this up into the earnings call. And usually when you saw that, that would be a signal that it was going to be a dump, right? They were going to miss, and, you know, everyone was going to get screwed here. And, you know, this thing hit 78 bucks in the pre-market this morning, you know? So, so everybody on the options was already pricing in a four-point move. This thing rents seven points. Like, Facebook never moves that much, you know, during an earnings call, really. So, so that was a complete blowout. Uh, you know, and then as far as Apple is concerned, or, or 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 you know any of these other major names out there, you know, I really don't think you can see before uh, just just looking at the tape now, uh, you know, how that earnings call is going to be. I re I really don't think you can do it anymore. All right. I mean, unless you have anything else that you want to uh, dive into. Well, no. I mean, let's let's open it up for questions here, guys. Do you have any questions here about summer trading? Things that you you might be having issues with right now, uh, as far as, as they relate to the environment right now. Whether you guys are intraday traders or you guys are, are, are swing traders, uh, throw out your questions. We'll take a couple of questions and then uh, and then we'll call it. All right, I have one. Uh, so this is from Mario. He says he's had one month trading live. Uh, he's lost more than 50% of his capital thanks to the summer market. He'd like to know some advice to try and recover the capital uh, in the summer, right. and he really can't read anything, so he he wants our help and and guidance. I guess it would be right. Um, well, Mario, I mean, the first question is, I mean, how did you how did you lose that fifty percent? I mean, are you trading options? What do you what do you what are you doing? And and is it really summer trading? It that is to blame, or is it is it your mindset? Is it your you know? What are you really going after? I will say right now that that you know if you've lost 50% and you're sitting here in a summer market environment where let's face it your entries might not be on point, Mario, it might be in the best interest for you to sit on your hands and wait out the summer until you get another environment. If you can't do that and you're just again you you just want to make that money back Again, listen to some of the things that we've already spoken about. You really have to dip by. You have to adjust your entries to account for your for your psychology. You know what I'm saying? When you want to buy those calls, when you want to buy those puts, that's exactly when you shouldn't buy them. And 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 that's really the point to range trading uh, and summer trading in general. The fade often works, all right, or the dip buy on works. All right, take it, take take this price line for example. I mean, she's been range bound, uh, you know, from from what 1210 to 1240 every single day. You're talking about 10 points on a fade or a dip buy every single day. You take names that have been in similar ranges, and that's your trade. Most retail though cannot trade like this because you're hardwired to buy breakouts and and to buy a breakdown or or short a breakdown. That's what you're hardwired to do, and you're talking about changing the way you look at the markets. This Amazon is getting crushed right now, dude. 332. <laughs> All right. Up, up next, we got a question from Travis. Uh, he wants to know if tape reading is still the best way to identify entry points on this swing trade. Absolutely, hands down. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I, I've, I've I've started to realize that, you know. Adding in other sciences and adding in other types of analysis to maybe help your bias and, 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 and maybe keep you on an even keel so that you're looking everything so so that you're looking at everything from an unbiased perspective 
you know, then then absolutely, maybe bringing in some other things to help you out. I mean, that's one of the things that, that, that I'm going through. I mean, tape to me is great as long as you listen to it, as long as you pay attention to it. But sometimes your psychology will have you thinking otherwise and have you chasing other things. But so for Travis, as far as swing entry points, you know, again, the LinkedIn, the Visa, the, 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 the financials, um, again, like these have all been great swings and tape can help you understand the environment which will help you adapt your entries for a, 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 for that swing uh, you know for the type of environment so so indirectly tape absolutely can help you can help you figure that out I think uh, just me personally those ADRs that we were talking about earlier yeah the Baidu uh, and, Baidu and, and Yoku the ADRs seem to be having a really clean right. uh, summer of trading so far um, so I would definitely keep an eye on them to, to see that. I, I think after this Baidu explosive earnings <laughs> call, though, I mean, that party might be over real soon. Well, Yoku... Man, incredible, though, huh? 150 to 220 bucks for Baidu. Yeah. That's nuts, man. Yeah. That is nuts. All right. Um, my buddy Saeed wants to know, for beginners, what's the maximum contract size uh, you recommend for occurring in the... or for trading, rather, in the current environment? I would say one to ten contracts. I would definitely say one to ten contracts. Absolutely, you know, nothing, nothing more than that. Uh, you know, unless you're really seeing that clean tape, um, you know, and you're really, you, you know, you really understand, uh, you know, the environment that you're in and what you're going to have to deal with if things go bad, you know. And and again, most beginners, they're not thinking about that. So I would cut it down to one to ten contracts. Ten being, you know, for a lot of beginner beginner accounts with, let's say, five grand, like even ten is a big lot. I mean, Greg, you trading small accounts, so what would you say? Uh, I would try and stick around two or three. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that not to sound like an idiot or, or an ass or anything, but yeah. one contract, uh, it's not worth even doing. Okay, because there's no attachment to the position is what you're saying, mentally? Yeah, mentally, it, there's no attachment to it. And, and financially, I mean, a lot of the retail right. brokers, you're looking at, Right. One one contract's gonna cost you ten bucks. Right, 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 right. Where, where why? You know? Right. <laughs> so okay. uh, definitely two or three. All right, that sounds All good. Right. What else we got? Right. Uh up next we got Gary. He wants to know your definition of a breakout versus a pullback and can you show him an example? Uh well dude, Gary, I mean that's not really the summer trading kind of thing. So uh you know that's more of a of a of a of a regular question, but but uh you know just to throw something out there like Gary, uh, uh you know, you could take this LinkedIn for example. So so LinkedIn, uh if you look at it for the past ten days or for the past month, uh you get this extreme massive chop around here, you get a market that's bullish and eventually and you get social networks that are being bid up, you know, Facebook and things like that. Uh, so now you come to this LinkedIn for a laggard play, and you get a nice clean breakout out of consolidation. Like this to me is is like a clean. This to me would be a clean trade. Um, and then as far as a pullback on uh, you know continuation and things like that, well you know and and that's going to change the, depending on the type of environment and depending on the type of the trade. You know, so if this LinkedIn was, let's say, already up here at 175, you wouldn't get a clean 20 points like this. This is this is this is a combination of short covering and people wanting to get in for a big picture move higher. Once there's enough people in the party, this thing is going to smoke everybody who's buying up here, right? So if your definition of a breakout is waiting until this area gets 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 cleaned through, and you're going to buy now after 15 or 20 points of a move, you're going to get fucking smoked. You you are going to get fucking smoked. And you're coming way late to the party. You're coming in after call options have been bid up to the moon, and you are going to get smoked. So, yeah, there's a lot of different definitions, but remember, they always come back to what type of environment you're in and where that stock or what kind of tape you're looking at. All right. Uh, we, I think this is the most important question you're going to answer all day. Sure, sure. Uh, it's about psychology and what you've done to prepare yourself for summer trading. Uh, dude, I mean, yeah. here, here's the thing. Here, it's kind of like car, it's kind of like converse for me. So for me, it's like uh, you know, I didn't really have time to, you know, uh, uh, adjust here for summer trading. I was revenge trading Netflix, trying to catch a short where I just got completely smoked on, and you know, I decided to just, I decided to just chill out. 
you know so so now that I've been looking at the environment every single day for the past month since we got into the summer you know these are the things that you realize you know the ideal thing is you realizing them soon enough so you can either adapt your strategy sit out completely sit out and just say you know what yeah I can't make money in this because I can't adjust my entries I don't trade like that so you sit out and you just wait for a better environment uh, that is more tailored to what you do uh, or you again adapt quick and, and 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 figure these things out. I think the revenge trade is is one of the hardest things to yeah go of. I mean, me yeah. personally, it, it it took me like nine months yeah. to let go of yeah. of my trade gone awry. So absolutely, uh, every day is a, a new thing. But uh, all right, so Jason wants to know, and or excuse me, Jason wants to know what you say about waiting on longer time frame really resonates with him. Uh, he wants your tips on what to f uh, focus on to identify or identify prime time frame for summer trading. Prime time frame. Uh, waiting on longer time frames really resonates with me as I get slapped by GS at the end of last week. Let's take a look at this Goldman at the end of last week. Um, okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. So, so Jason was correct in his assessment. Of, of where Goldman was going to go, but couldn't deal with the chop or couldn't deal with the summer trading environment and therefore let the, and therefore probably let the trade go and is now looking at it another six points higher. Jason, am I, am I right on that assessment right there, Jason? Eroyan is, 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 is I, I think that's how I say the, uh, the last name. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So, so you know, again, you have to... <laughs> Again, this is a situation where Goldman had earnings. Like Goldman had earnings, all the banks had earnings. So you needed to see how those earnings were going to play out before you went ahead and really attacked these things. Prior to the earnings call, they were being bought up. They were being bought up. So I think it was just a, again, it was just a, a sector-wide rotation where money went into these financial names prior to the earnings coming out. Bank of America, or I believe J.P. Morgan was the first one that came out, and just on the strength of J.P. Morgan, you know, it was enough to say to yourself, okay, let's go ahead and start swing and start swinging these things long. But you needed to pick a time frame that allowed for for the consolidation to happen before they really start paying you out. And this is again, this is the difficult part because Jason and everybody else, where do you want to buy these things? You want to buy these things when they're hot. You want to buy them when they're hot, and everybody else wants them. But when you when you take that to the options world, what happens when everybody else wants them? That means your option prices are going to get bid up to the moon way far than they should, and then smart money is going to come in and fade the shit out of you. Market makers are going to sell you. They're going to be happy to sell you these calls at these high prices. Everything consolidates. You lose 50% on your money. You get out of the trade, and then it continues to happen. Right, so the burnouts have to happen. You know what I mean? The the shakeouts on these options have to happen, and you have to have the foresight to think about that. You know, to account for that. But it's very hard to do when you're sitting there and the shit looks hot. I understand. I understand what you guys are going through. You know, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a thing that you guys really have to pay attention to going forward in environments like this. I, that I mean, that's what they do, though. Like that is summer Absolutely. trading. They make it look hot. They Absolutely, make you want it. They make and then... you want it because it's so easy in light volume. In light in yes. a light volume environment, it is so easy to push a name like Priceline up 15 points. It is so easy to push all of these names at their hot, at the extremities of their ranges, whether they're on the downside or the upside. So you guys go ahead and pile in, thinking you're going to get a breakout. And you don't get it. It's a fade. And if you just faded it up there, because the the environment doesn't give you the 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 you know the necessary power or the juice for that breakout to happen, if you fade up there, you're going to be making a lot of money. You can actually you can make a lot of money. You know. And this is this takes a this takes some people a lot of time to figure out. It's taken me a lot of time. Like I usually don't trade like this either. I either just sit on my hands and wait. Uh, or you know, I punt around here with small size, or I'm taking massive losers just alongside the rest of you guys. Yeah, but you know. I think that's uh, that's all we got time for today. Uh, right. Just so everybody knows, we're gonna have another uh, another webinar on Tuesday. It'll be the same time, 4:30. It will replace SLTV. 
Uh, there will be a link emailed out Sunday for those who are signed up to the newsletter, and uh, we'll see you guys around. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you again. Thank you.